Um, I'm Mark Larson, Superintendent of Schools. On behalf of the School Board Administration, I want to welcome you all to the Celebration of Excellence. If I may, I'd like to engage you in just a, a quick little study thing that's been done by Elizabeth Newton. It's called The Curse of Knowledge, and it goes something like this. There's a tapper, me, and a listener, you. And what you do is you try to guess the song that I'm about to tap out. The study that Elizabeth Newton done was not about the ability of the guessers to guess the song. The study was about the perception of the tapper. In this instance, I'm the tapper and I hear the words in my mind. I've seen the video before. I selected the song because it came out in the year 2000, the year that many of you were born. It's done by a band that plays stadiums and, and huge arenas. I know what it is. Why can't you? That's the curse of knowledge. And so to me, the curse of knowledge, the song is Beautiful Day by U2. Um, but the curse of knowledge is something that we need to be guarded against. Obviously the students here have great knowledge, but I think what we need to do is do more than just knowledge. We're moving from the information age to the age that I think is the age of the heart. The age where things like compassion, empathy, understanding each other, appreciation of differences, those are where the real skills are going to be required and those are where we're going to need to make the best difference in the lives of people. We've all been in situations where we know exactly what we mean, but the listener doesn't always do that. We need to be patient and step back and make sure that we are communicating effectively and that we're looking for differences and understandings. I think the experiment though is a little bit misnamed about the curse of knowledge. It's not really a curse or it's about knowledge or not knowledge. Um, it does seem to point out to me that empathy patience with the listener, and understanding are things that will make a difference. So students, congratulations, and thank you in advance for the differences you'll make. Welcome. We want to welcome everyone here tonight. It is one of the best events that we at the high school are able to put on. We get to honor our great students, our great teachers, and celebrate with family and friends. Welcome to the 2018 Excellence Dinner. Tonight we are going to recognize students in the top 10% of their academic class. That is not an easy feat to be in the top 10% and their hard work has got them to this point. Each student here tonight has invited one staff member that exemplifies excellence in education and has had a positive impact on their lives. For a student to invite only one staff member from the Matamidi District is not an easy task. Tonight's event is possible due to many generous donations, and many of our donors have contributed each year. Tonight we will begin a tradition of recognizing a highlighted sponsor at the conclusion of the program. And now I have the distinct honor to introduce Kathy Mackin. She is Matamidi School District's Teacher of the Year. She will speak to us tonight, and Ms. Mackin has been teaching in Matamidi for 15 years. She has taught students ages 5 to 21 in special education and regular education. Kathy grew up in White Bear Lake, attended the College of St. Teresa for her Bachelor of Science degree, earned additional special education licenses from the St. Thomas University, and earned her master's degree from Hamlin University. Kathy has lived in Matamidi for 28 years. She and her husband, Kevin, have raised three children who are all Zephyrs. Kathy is also passionate about teaching. She enjoys yoga, biking, and reading. Please join me in welcoming Kathy Mackin. Good evening, students. It's just delightful to see all of you tonight. And I remember clearly many of you sitting in my sixth grade English class where your traits of success we're just beginning to bud. And now, six years later, it's rewarding for me to see the blossoming, successful young adults that you have become. Teachers, what could be a higher honor than to be invited here by a student who identifies you as a person who has made a difference? Your impact is a legacy that will follow these students as they blaze new paths into a bright future. And parents, Congratulations on the success of your children. Know that the unconditional love and support 
that you have provided in their school careers has shaped them into the successful young people they are, ready to go out into the bigger world and to continue to make their mark there. As an English teacher, I am passionate about books. Students, I know that many of you are as well. I recall a few of you sometimes even, even hiding books on your lap so you could sneak peeks and continue reading during lesson time. In Robert Hogue's middle school memoir called Ugly, he says that growing up he never thought he had a story worth telling. Yes, he was born with a massive tumor in his face and deformed legs, but he said there was just too much life to be living, making new friends, wondering if he would ever make it onto the football team, and getting into mischief. Eventually, Robert did tell a story for multiple reasons, one being that storytelling is the crazy glue that holds us all together. But Robert also cautions, it's also worth saying that most books are a little bit of a lie even when the story that they're telling is true. Lives and books often look like a complicated jigsaw puzzle. Even if the puzzle was messy to start with, by the end of the book, all the pieces magically fall into place. Like puzzle pieces, lives and books have some sharp corners, some curvy parts, some straight edges. One piece clicks into another, and the picture they make becomes clear and complete. Life is not a book, though. And life is not as pretty as one might think by perusing through Facebook. <laughs> we must not judge ourselves by everyone else's seemingly put-together puzzle. As we are living our lives, we don't always know what the picture will look like. I sure didn't. My senior year of high school, I knew I wanted to go to college. But coming from a family of eight kids and limited financial resources, I didn't know how I might make that happen. Jim, my older brother, by one year had earned a full four-year Navy ROTC scholarship at the University of Minnesota to study civil engineering. And to me, it looked like he had some of his puzzle pieces falling together. My puzzle pieces were sort of floating around, looking for a surface on which to land. However, I was lucky enough to have my high school track coach and teacher intervene and encourage me to apply to four-year colleges. Thanks to Lyle Helke's support, I ended up at a small all-women's college where I studied elementary education and special education. And it turns out that four of the eight kids in my family became teachers. It's still one of my 85-year-old dad's proudest accomplishments that all eight of us graduated from college. I was 16 when my youngest sister, Anne, was born. She was just two years old when I left for college, and that was hard for both of us as we spent a lot of time together. I would never have imagined that 22 years later, Anne and I would complete our master degrees at Hamlin University, going through the two-year cohort together. And that was a sweet time when my puzzle pieces found each other. At other times in my life, the pieces didn't come together so nicely. In the beginning years of my teaching career, I had the opportunity to teach students with severe disabilities. Although I cared greatly for these students, it proved to be challenging and stressful. When I go through tough days now, I recall having to toilet teenagers and the day a sweet young girl bit me on the nose and wouldn't let go until another staff member pulled her away. <laughs> then there was the time when a student wanted to help me push another student who was in a wheelchair as we walked around Lake Como. This extra help landed the wheelchair and the student in it into the lake. Good this thing the student was just a little bit wet and not hurt, and good thing the parents had a good sense of humor. <laughs> but eventually, I found my niche in Matamidae, where I have enjoyed 15 years of teaching language arts. In addition to Robert Hoag's puzzle metaphor for navigating through uncertainties in life, I would like to offer another idea, and that is the gift of self-compassion. Life can be smooth at times, life can be hard at times, it's the blending of both that makes life beautiful. 
Students, when journeying ahead with your lives and bumping into the inevitable hard times, consider being kind to yourselves. It is this unconditional passion for ourselves that leads naturally to unconditional passion for others. If you can be comfortable in your own shoes, believing in yourself, then you can also have compassion for others and believe in them. All around us, we have teachers. From the mentor teachers you have selected to be here tonight, to your parents, your grandparents, your siblings, your classmates, even the people who drive you most crazy, yes, you can have your eyes and your hearts opened and learn compassion from them too. Students, your present here to, presence here tonight acknowledges all of the hard work you have done as well as the choices and sacrifices that you have made to succeed academically at Matamidai High School. Soon you will leave the nest and it looks like you have exciting adventures ahead. I'm thrilled for you. This step going to college is probably the biggest transition you will have experienced in your lives so far. You will encounter sweetness and beauty. You will bump up against disappointments and heartache. Life is complex. You never know what surprises life may bring. I never imagined standing here speaking to you and having the opportunity to connect with you again. In this next chapter of your life, I'd like to offer these three things to tuck away in your backpacks as you prepare for college. One, keep reading. <laughs> yes, you will undoubtedly be consuming a large amount of reading, always looking for that text evidence in your coursework textbooks but I encourage you to keep reading the books that you choose and that you enjoy. Each time we finish a book, we have gained new perspectives on the world and we have learned something about ourselves. Reading is also a healthy escape. Two, don't worry about the jigsaw puzzle. It's okay to be a bit worried, uncertain, and confused at times, even if it looks, if, even if books make lives seem extraordinary. And finally, have compassion for yourselves. Be patient and kind with yourself, and that will allow you to accept the rough pieces of your puzzle until they smooth out or until they go in a different direction. All of that is okay. I wish you all ease and happiness in this next chapter of your lives. Congratulations. Tonight, each student and each teacher being recognized will receive a gift from the Celebration of Excellence Committee. Every year we look for a book that would be taken and used and appreciated. This year, Mr. Lane suggested a book to me, a more beautiful question. When you think of education, you think of the answer. It's all about the answer, but this book might help you think more about the question that you ask. So Kathy, for you. Beautiful. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you. At this time, we get to recognize our students and their honored teacher. What I will do is I will state the student's name and their honored teacher, and we ask that they come to the front of the room where Dr. Larson and Ms. Wagner will congratulate and recognize them, and they'll receive their gift. Once you have received your gift and the video has played, then you can be seated back at your table. So let's begin. Our first student tonight is Isabel Berkland and her honored teacher, Ms. Anastasia Eldridge. It is an honor to celebrate this night with such an elite group of students and teachers. I am especially honored to be invited by this beautiful young woman, Isabel Berkland. Isabel is kind, soft-spoken, ultra-polite, and very sweet. I am none of these things. <laughs> Further evidence that opposites attract. While Isabel has a soft demeanor, she is also tenacious. 
She will redo and redo a problem until she gets it right. She will ask for clarification until she can make sense of a concept. I admire her perseverance and her beautifully organized three ring binder. <laughs> I see in Isabel a young woman who can really make a difference in the world. She is an amazing blend of compassion, intelligence, and willingness to give it her all. I am honored to have been part of her journey to become the person she will be. Our next student is Alexa Carlson and her honored teacher, Ms. Abby Holmquist. Alexa is one of the students with the most initiative that I've ever had. She doesn't hesitate to seize opportunities, whether it's stepping up to fill a leadership role or traveling around the world. In volunteering to take leadership of French club, she single-handedly revitalized the club and developed it into what it is today. I watched her take her passion for the French language and turn it into something more than a grade. She used it to create opportunities for others. Alexa gives 100% to whatever she's doing, but in a quiet way that doesn't seek glory. Alexa is a humble leader who focuses more on doing a high quality job for the sake of others. I know these qualities will bring her success in all of her future endeavors. Our next student is Grace Costa and her teacher, Ms. Angela Buckingham. I'm happy to be here tonight as a guest of Grace Costa. I was fortunate enough to have Grace in a couple of classes early in her high school career. I always admired Grace's positive attitude and a desire to learn. Whether she was participating in a discussion or working hard on an assignment, she always brought a passion for learning and optimism that was contagious. I often run into Grace in the community and at her family's farm, and it's obvious that she works just as hard outside of school as she does in school. I've enjoyed getting to know her a little more each year, and I feel honored to have been a part of her educational experience. Grace, I'm confident that as you move forward, you will continue to challenge yourself and embrace the unknown. Good luck to you next year. Congratulations on your recognition this evening, and thank you for including me in the celebration. Next student is Ben Domeyer and his honored teacher, Mr. Chad Garls. I knew Ben was an amazing person from the first day that I met him. In my first days in MHS, I noticed that Ben immediately would do whatever I asked of the class, sometimes to the extreme. He always asked questions and participated in class discussion. He has always been one of the most respectful students I have ever had the privilege to teach. He's always asking what he can do to help. He leads others to do and think the same, and he always thanks me for my time or for just for a good rehearsal. My favorite memory of Ben will always be his growth in theater. His sophomore year, he had to be coaxed to be on stage rather than in the tech crew. His junior year, he earned accolades for dancing with blankets and his sexy walk as a UPS man. <laughs> this year, he has taken over lead roles and proven he is a great actor as well as singer, academic, and all-around awesome human being. Our next student is Noah Eberhard and his honored teacher, Ms. Diane Chernholm. Noah Eberhard joined Matami High Schools in sixth grade. I had him in sixth, seventh, and eighth grade Spanish, and it was already four years ago. Noah always asked good questions, connecting and applying the concepts. He was always involved in class. He actually involved Spanish in his day-to-day -day life, seeking out ways to speak Spanish outside of the classroom. He was motivated, looked way beyond the assessments to the ultimate goal of proficiency. He was excellent at problem solving at, when he didn't understand something. And most importantly, Noah saw learning Spanish as an opportunity, not as an obligation. He was constantly leading the class in a positive direction because of this outlook. Learning was an opportunity for him. So, felicitaciones, Noah. Ha sido mi placer. And thank you for involving me in this wonderful evening. Our next student is Julia Farraher and her honored teacher, Ms. Angela Hill. Julia, what an honor it has been to be chosen by you. You are an incredible person inside and out. It has been such a blessing to have taught you in AP Psych. I don't know where to begin talking about the amazing, incredible qualities you possess, so I will highlight a few. Julia, your academic ability combined with your work ethic has brought you here today to receive this honor. As a teacher, I truly admire your academic success. Your incredible drive and passion for learning is one of the amazing qualities you have. I have yet to encounter a student who is 
who is as intrinsically motivated as you. And yes, I had to use a psych term. <laughs> Secondly, I admire your driven and passionate personality. A few words that come to mind when thinking about you are insightful, mature, thoughtful, respectful, reasonable, kind, and genuine. These are just a few of the many incredible characteristics you have. You will move on from Matamidai to do amazing things. I am proud of all you have done here at Matamidai and cannot wait to hear about what's next in your life. I have been blessed to have had you as a student and I'm thankful to be here with you today. You have left an incredible legacy. Now, go impact the world. Our next student is Aiden Flick and her honored teacher, Mr. Paul Christensen. I do not believe I am unique when I say that, at times, teachers come across a student and think, wow, that person has a lot of ability. I wonder if she will use it for good or for evil. <laughs> Some students, unfortunately, use their intelligence to show others how they lack intelligence. Fortunately, Aiden Flick is not like that. In all my interactions with Aiden since I first met her in her sophomore year, she has consistently used her intelligence to move discussions forward, to solve problems, not to show off. Currently, as one of the managing editors of the school paper, she thoughtfully works with me as we make the final edits just before an edition goes to print. Combining wit and kindness, she balances the needs of the publication, the wishes of the journalists, my opinions, and her insights to craft a professional ethical publication. When she and I butt heads, she politely lets me have my way 40% of the time. <laughs> Aiden could be using her gifts to become a mean-spirited, sarcastic supervillain, Instead, she's a smiling, kind-hearted superhero. Our next student is Matthew Freeman and his honored teacher, Mr. John Allen. Congratulations to Matthew and his family for the honor he's receiving. I was Matthew's eighth grade science teacher at the middle school. I could tell you about what a great student Matthew was at the middle school, but here's a story that reveals more about him. My dad and I ran into Matthew at a restaurant back when Matthew was in eighth grade. I don't remember exactly what we talked about, but I do remember what my dad had to say about Matthew afterwards. My dad said, now that's a real gentleman. Are all eighth grade boys like that nowadays? I told my dad that not all eighth grade boys would fall into the category of gentlemen, but Matthew certainly did and does and I'm sure it plays a role in his success. I look forward to following your success at the University of Minnesota, Matthew, in the engineering program. Thank you for inviting me to your celebration. I'm honored and humbled. Our next student is Nathan Gabriel and his honored teacher, Mr. Mike Moeller. Leadership is not a position or a title. It is an action and example. As an educator, this career is often more about learning than teaching. I'm the guest of an incredibly intelligent, caring, hardworking, and humble student tonight who exemplifies this quote every day. I have had the great honor and privilege to learn from and with Nathan Gabriel, as he has been a significant contributor to the growth of our instrumental music program. He is a leader who will never tell you about it, but rather demonstrate his leadership through his actions. He sacrifices his personal gain for that of the group and always strives to do his best in everything he chooses to do, from fantasy football and ultimate frisbee to making music and academic achievement. I can't thank you enough for all the times you have led through your actions without complaint, and I hope that as you move forward from high school, you continue to inspire and impact all of those who are lucky enough to interact with you in your life. The true musician is to bring light into people's hearts. This Bobby McFerrin quote can be seen through Nathan Gabriel's life. I thank you for the light that you have brought into my heart and I look forward to learning of your future adventures. Our next student is Maya Geiger and her honored teacher, Mr. Jim Lane. Did you know that the molecular structure of the insulin protein extracted from cone snail venom prevents it from forming a hexamer due to a deletion on the beta chain that allows it to more efficiently bind to the human insulin receptor, which could potentially help the patients in a hyperglycemic state? If not, you should really talk to Maya. The seemingly endless supply of energy that Maya brings to every aspect of her life is truly amazing. 
She continually challenges herself, and you will know when she is because it's usually accompanied with a loud, oh my gosh, followed by a boisterous laugh. She is never satisfied with the superficial and actively pushes for the edge of our understanding. Instead of simply reading a journal article about the, the process of artificial photosynthesis, she called the primary investigator and asked him questions, to which one of his responses was, if you figure that out, we'd really like to know. Maya, your work ethic and raw excitement for learning and discovery truly give me hope for the future. Don't ever stop exploring the vast reaches of the natural world. Make your life a never-ending sequence of oh my gosh moments. Best wishes. I can't wait to see how you will change the world. Our next student is Rose Grilinski and her honored teacher, Miss Elizabeth Holmes. Hello. Hello, my name is Beth Holmes and I teach kindergarten at Wildwood. Thank you, Rose, for choosing me, your kindergarten teacher, to be a part of your celebration. Rose was a former kindergartner in a class of 16 kindergartners. It was my smallest class size in 30 years of teaching kindergarten. I had 10 girls and six boys. Both Rose and her twin brother, Adam, were in this class. As I think about Rose as a kindergartner, I remember she was happy, always having a smile on her face. Rose would quietly follow the directions, doing exactly what she was supposed to do. She was a great listener, made good choices, and wanted to learn. Rose is blessed to have a very supportive family who always encouraged her to do her best. She has grown into an amazing young woman with a beautiful smile, a kind heart, a positive, happy outlook on life with a bright future. Thank you, Rose, for choosing me, your kindergarten teacher, to be a part of the celebration. I wish you the best as you continue on your journey. Our next student is Nathan Gregg and his honored teacher, Mr. Charles Scoba. I was Nathan's first grade teacher, and he was in my last first grade class before I moved to fourth grade. I always remembered the grin on his face every time he stepped into the classroom. At first, I kept a watchful eye on Nathan because I was wondering if there was more to that grin. And as the school year progressed, I realized that the grin on Nathan's face let me know that he was excited to learn and meet the many first grade challenges head on. In first grade, Nathan loved to explore, investigate, and be a terrific friend to others. Nathan never said a bad word about anyone, and he was a great listener, which are qualities I feel he still has today. As Nathan moved up in grades, I was able to be a part of his journey with God and fourth grade religion. I spent quality time with him as we talked about comics, superheroes, and good versus evil. In middle school, Nathan became King Triton in the St. Jude musical, The Little Mermaid. And I thought this was a perfect role for Nathan because he possessed a lot of qualities that King Triton had in the musical. And these qualities were wise, determined, accepting of others, caring, selfless, courageous, and honorable. I wish you the best, Nathan, and may God bless you with much happiness as you keep him close to your heart. Our next student is Lexi Herod and her honored teacher, Mr. Rob Gary. Well, where do you begin with Lola? Well, first off, that's Lexi's Spanish name. And if I remember right, it would take me a couple years to ever refer to her by any other name. Lexi, as some know her, has used her abundance of talents, winning personality, and her gift as a listener to represent her class and our school in a profound way over the last four years. She is upbeat and insightful, and her insatiable need to contribute to the betterment of her environment and those around her is infectious. However, I honestly believe her greatest attribute is her ability to listen. Due to this gift, Lexi is able to generate an immense amount of trust, which has afforded her to accomplish many wonderful things during her time at Matamidi. When you throw in that winning smile, you have a devastating combination. I know I speak for all the teachers at Matamidi when I thank Lexi for all she has done. Matamidi is truly a better place because of her caring accomplishments and, of course, her ability to listen. Our next student is John Paul Heinzen and his teacher, Mr. Dennis Dobson. It is an honor to be recognized by John Paul as a teacher who made a difference. 
John Paul was one of the brightest students I've ever taught. He was always the guy I could count on having the answer and to be able to understand the most challenging material. When the class played review games, it was always the goal to beat JP. It seldom happened. John Paul is a great academic performer. We know that. But that, but that is not the only talent he has. John Paul is a highly gifted musician. I remember watching him play piano at one of the welcome back meetings during workshop. He was amazing. John Paul has so many talents, but his greatest attribute is that he is humble about his gifts and he is kind to people. These things don't happen in a vacuum. John Paul has been blessed with a loving and supportive family, which has been key to his success. I know he is on to bigger and better things after high school. I know he will be successful in his, in his endeavors. Good luck, John Paul, and have a great life. Our next student is Regan Hubbard and her honored teacher, Ms. Jennifer Merthen. I'm so happy to be here this evening to honor Reagan's academic accomplishments. Although she has grown and matured throughout the years that I have known her, she has remained true to herself. Reagan, or Renela as she is known in Spanish class, is earnest, methodical, and yet she is willing to take risks while speaking Spanish. I still have her project from this past fall, an original ending for the book Don Quixote, and plan to use it as a model for future classes. She is also cheerful and always willing to help others. Furthermore, her questions and curiosity make me a better teacher and enrich the classroom experience for everyone. One of the things that makes Reagan unique is that she knows herself well and is comfortable with who she is. For example, one assignment required her to select an object that represents her, and she chose the sun because it is brilliant and positive, yet also has a family. As she said so perfectly in this assignment, the sun is a star and she is a star. Our next student is Andrew Cryer and his honored teacher, Ms. Carly Vale. As many of you know, Andrew Cryer is the president of Matamidai's Honor Society, the organization which I advise. When applying to be an officer, part of the application process is to give a short one minute speech in front of their fellow NHS peers as to why they are fit for the position. When Andrew ran for this position, he ran unopposed. When this happens, many students shrug off the speech and just kind of ramble. Though Andrew admits now that he was unprepared, he came up with a witty speech about how a president must be able to solve problems quickly. While giving this speech, he solved a Rubik's Cube in under a minute, one of Andrew's many talents. Though this speech was just a small instance in Andrew's reign as NHS president, it describes him well. He has proven to be able to think on his feet and get the job done successfully and efficiently. Besides being a phenomenal leader for our chapter, Andrew is an all-around great young man. He has a quirky sense of humor, is able to talk to anyone, and genuinely cares about everyone he interacts with. I've enjoyed getting to know Andrew over the last year, and I know he will only excel from here on out. I am honored that a student so well-rounded chose to invite me to this important event. So thank you, Andrew. Our next student is Amy Larson and her honored teacher, Ms. Courtney McCormick. Every interaction with Amy is an experience. You truly never know what direction a conversation will go when Amy is involved. The one thing that is certain is that any interaction will end with everyone around her smiling and very likely laughing. Amy has a gift of both creativity and exceptional aptitude when creating in the Fab Lab. Amy is gifted in the use of three-dimensional design software, and it's rare we see a student interested in engineering that also has her level of creativity in her designs. Some examples of her work are a 3D printed dipping sauce holder for her car, that she was very disappointed to learn someone beat her to the patent for, and a box to hold her alarm clock so that she has to make sure she has to get out of bed and work at it to get it open so she won't sleep through the alarm. Amy's laid-back approach to life just adds to the Amy experience. Did you know Amy can juggle and play the recorder at the same time? And that she wears a chicken suit on occasion? I'm honored to have had Amy in the Fab Lab and to be her choice to be here tonight. I'm certain Amy will use her creativity and exceptional skills to invent something fantastic that will change our world, or at the very least, make it easier to eat and drive. Our next student is Timothy Lindquist and his honored teacher, Mr. Keith Newman. 
When I think about Timmy Lindquist, the word exceptional comes to mind. He's exceptional in many areas. He is truly an outstanding student as his record demonstrates throughout his middle and high school years. He's also a very strong athlete who has made his teams compete at the highest level in all three of his chosen sports. He's an exceptional person who leads others in a humble yet confident manner. His work with our school's Fellowship of Christian Athletes as a student leader was spot on. When he led a huddle, the level of thought and message that was conveyed was valuable for all who attended. Timmy doesn't just coast. His talent and gifts are maximized by a tremendous work ethic. In addition to getting voted as Outstanding Attitude for our basketball team this season, Timmy was also voted for our Workhorse Award, which goes to the person who works the hardest. What I've appreciated most about Timmy this year is that he cares for others. At just the right times of the season, Timmy would ask me how I was doing. His perception and care for others is yet another exceptional quality of his. Thanks for including me in this night to recognize your excellence, Timmy. Well done. I look forward to watching your continued success going beyond high school. Our next student is Hannah Laughlin and her honored teacher, Mr. Dave Wald. Hannah, I have thoroughly enjoyed working with you in both accelerated pre-calculus and girls soccer. In both academics and athletics, you have persevered through challenging times with hard work and determination to reach the pinnacle of success in high school. I have no doubt that the intense passion that drove you to high test scores in class and juggling a soccer ball for 15 minutes straight until we made you stop at soccer tryouts <laughs> will allow you to accomplish whatever you set your mind to do. You're an amazing young lady, but in full disclosure, I have contacted your college and your entire dorm room will be bubble wrapped to prevent head injuries prior to big games. <laughs> Our next student is Anna McCormick and her honored teacher, Mr. Jan Nelson. I know Anna will expect me to make fun of her like I normally do, like say something about how short she is or how she's a math nerd or how she only joined Rocket Team just to meet guys. Although those things are true, that would honestly diminish what kind of thoughtful student she really is. Anna is one of the most compassionate people that I have ever had the honor of knowing. Over the many years I have gotten to work with her, she never fails to amaze me with her positive attitude and work ethic. Her drive in the studio to create beautiful ceramic objects is unmatched. It has been a pleasure, and I know you will be successful at anything you put your heart into. McCormick, you will be missed. Our next student is Peter Merrill and his honored teacher, Ms. Janine Nelson. Peter, Peter, Peter. <laughs> to know Peter is to truly enjoy Peter. He is a very intelligent young man that has an insatiable desire to learn and to talk about it. I was fortunate to have Peter in my A-Push class. He was able to bring a wonderful dynamic of passionate beliefs, fantastic critical thinking skills, and the ability to get so worked up about his opinions that the entire class at times would just sit back, watch, listen, and of course learn. In addition, I appreciate Peter's desire to not sit on the sideline and observe, but rather to jump in the middle of a cause and to get involved. Peter, you will make a difference in this world, and I'm excited to watch your journey. Thank you very much. Our next student is Caleb Meyer and his honored teacher, Ms. Ann Gary. It is such a pleasure to know Caleb Meyer. Caleb was in my Spanish two class this year, and let me tell you, this is one special young man. Caleb is obviously extremely intelligent, but is also one of the most clever, easygoing, likable people you will ever meet. Caleb is a dependable and kind person whose enthusiasm brought life into the class every day. He's a leader, a collaborator, and a good listener. He goes out of his way to make those around him feel comfortable and important. He has impressed me time and time again with his willingness to help others. Caleb works with anyone and everyone. 
Every day in class, I knew that I could expect the highest quality work from him and that his efforts would inspire others in the class to do their very best. I would like to thank Caleb for adding creativity and positivity to Spanish class and inspiring me as a teacher and a person. Our next student is Sydney Morris and honored teacher, Ms. Jackie Halverson. Hi, Sydney. Congratulations. I am so honored to be here with you tonight. Sydney, one of my favorite memories of you um, comes from sophomore year. You won't remember this, but we were having a class discussion about Lord of the Flies, which is a pretty dark book. William Golding implies through events in his novel that every person is capable of evil. Well, the conversation was swinging back and forth until one young man in our class said, come on, Mrs. Halverson, are you going to tell me that someone like Sidney Morris is capable of evil? <laughs> Maybe me, but Sidney? That's ridiculous. We all laughed because he was right. It is impossible. He chose you for a very good reason. You treated everyone in that classroom, including me, with exceptional kindness and compassion. You were not capable of evil. I'm not even sure if you were capable of crabbiness. Sydney, your brains and hard work have brought you here tonight, and I applaud that, but it is your kindness and compassion that I will remember. Congratulations, Sydney. Our next student is Peyton Nelson, an honored teacher, Mr. Corey Ratzloff. Peyton Nelson. When I think of Peyton Nelson, I think of consistency. Every day, Peyton. Every day for four years, Peyton has come to class with a smile on her face. Every day for four years, she's treated her classmates with respect. Every day for four years, Peyton has worked hard in school and done all that she has been asked. I've had the pleasure of having Peyton as a student for four years, and I can tell you that every single day, she's carried herself in a way that I would want my own daughters to. I'm really going to miss her infectious smile and positive energy, especially next year when I look at her desk. Instead of seeing Peyton, I will see some squirrely ninth grader that can't keep quiet and can't stop touching the people around them. Ugh. <laughs> Anyways, Peyton, I wish you the best in everything you do. Thank you for the last four years and for being such a great student and person every single day. Our next student is Haley Oswald and her honored teacher, Ms. Debbie Driscoll. I have had the honor of coaching Haley Oswald for four years. She came in pretty nervous to be on the high school gymnastic team. It was a new experience for her, but she had a lot of goals already set, what she wanted to accomplish her first year. And Haley has continued to set goals every single year. She's had ups and downs like every athlete goes through. She, but through this process, she's learned how to handle disappointments. She's learned how to adjust goals and keep working as hard as she could on, to the success she wanted to have. I have absolutely loved being a part of Haley's life these last four years. I have enjoyed coaching her. I have enjoyed watching her reach her goals and being successful. And I can only wish, Haley, I wish you the best of luck in college and please stay in touch. Next student is Grace Rearman and her honored teacher, Ms. Liz Hain. The best word to describe Grace Rearman is grace. No, I know, I know. It is an absolute cop-out of an answer, but it, hear me out, it's so true. As her teacher, I appreciate her kindness towards her peers. And her classmates, I, I know for a fact, in fact, they've commented to me about how calm and patient she is during discussions and projects. And frankly, her humility hides her tennis prowess from any unsuspecting observer. I'm in awe of her, but this is not due to her intelligence because, I mean, really, that's a given. She's, she's brilliant. But it's her caring and affable nature that's so genuine and so natural. I mean, 
even as I read student essays without names. I do that, I call it blind. So I don't know the student that's writing the essay, but I usually could identify Grace because she uses such an authentic and comforting tone. I, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to not only have Grace in class, but also have the privilege to read her work, to watch her grow as a writer and a person, and encounter her graceful nature firsthand. Congratulations on all your success, Grace. You absolutely deserve it. Our next student is Nathan Rogers, an honored teacher, Ms. Nancy Renning. I'm pleased to welcome Nathan Rogers this evening and introduce him to you from my perspective. Nathan is a very bright young man who is an excellent writer. He was a student in my advanced placement language and composition class where the students did a great deal of writing and even more importantly, a great deal of thinking. In addition to being an excellent writer, he's very interested in politics, interested in, in music. Um, he took it upon himself to write a grant so that he could get the money to plant a garden in front of the middle school, which turned out to be a beautiful effort, even though it was very, very challenging. In the future, Nathan hopes to major in finance in college or at least in some area of business, with perhaps an emphasis also on physics. Whatever he decides to do, I know that he will be absolutely successful. Our next student is Josie Watkins, an honored teacher, Ms. Lori Waitis. I had the pleasure of meeting Josie as a freshman on her first day of school in advisory. Four years of watching this young freshman girl grow into an amazing young woman. I also had Josie in Accelerated Algebra 2 and saw a new academic side. Her junior and senior year, I witnessed the athletic side of Josie while I did the book at her volleyball games. I saw the quiet, calm, academic-driven student become a loud, ambitious, hard-hitting athlete. Josie Watkins. Josie, joyful, optimistic, smiley, intelligent, apathetic. Watkins, warm-hearted, ambitious, thoughtful, kind, independent, nice, and selfless. Josie, you are all these things and more. Your amazing personality, drive, and selfless ability to put others before yourself will take you far. I am so proud of you and all you have accomplished and can't wait to see what the future holds. Good luck and best wishes. And the next student is Liam Waddell, an honored counselor, Mr. John Aikens. Liam, first of all, thank you for inviting me to this special event. Liam and I have worked together throughout the years on coming up with his schedule. And Liam has come up with a schedule that has been as challenging or more challenging than any student I've worked with during my 23 years as a high school counselor. Liam, thank you so much for this invitation and best of luck to you for your future. And now I would like to invite Associate Principal Luann Wagner to the podium. Tonight has been a celebration of the excellence of the class of 2018 and their commitment to education. The excellence of our teachers and their commitment to our students. The excellence of our parents and their commitment to our district. The excellence of Matamirai School District and its commitment to preparing each of our students for their future. Thank you so much for the great honor of working with such amazing parents, teachers, and students. Good night, have a safe trip home.